What is up and welcome to our native narrative deep dive in the world of Red Dead Redemption 2. This is part 3 of 4 and if you watched part 1 we covered the introduction to the Wapiti, and in part 2 we saw just what was being done to the indigenous people, as well as getting some clarification as to the cause of their oppression. In this part we will be covering the end of the Wapiti plotline, as well as seeing the fate of the tribe in this world. With the synopsis out of the way, roll the montage. <laughs> So to bring you back up to speed, we left off with Captain Monroe being sent off on a train, as Colonel Favors had just accused him of treason. After this, Arthur returns to the Wapiti Indian Reservation in order to meet with Rainsfall and discuss the current state of the Wapiti struggle, and Arthur makes a choice to decide the fate of Eagle Flies. Hello? Come in. Mr. Morgan, I'm so glad you could make it. How are you? My son. My son is foolish, but he's... Still my son. I know your son. A little. <laughs> He's very brave. Very angry. <laughs> He's me. How is your father? He's dead a long time. He <sighs> lived a lot longer than was good for any of us. My son probably wishes the same to me. <laughs> I doubt that. I want peace. I need my people to be safe. All my life I've tried to bring peace, but I love my son. They'll hang him for treason, treason. He is the chief son of a proud nation. How could he commit treason? And people who have lied to my people for a hundred years or more, that's treason. Well, what should I do? I don't think there's much chance reasoning with Colonel Favors. No. And any chance we had, your friend, Mr. Vanderland, has ensured relations between us and the Army are worse than any point in the last five years. I'm sure he means well. But matters are more complex than he understands. Me and Charles will try and rescue your son. No. Yes, yes. I ain't got much to lose, and you got... I'm doing this. Charles! Where are you? Come on, let's go. This conversation is important, as it not only emphasizes the effect and influence that Dutch has had on Eagle Flies and the situation between the Wapiti and the Army, it also gives insight into just how willing Rainsfall is to remain diplomatic. Even after all Dutch has done to stir up more chaos, and Colonel Favor's continuous stream of lies and assaults on the Wapiti, he still urges Arthur to not rescue his son, as it would only cause more chaos. While Rainsfall might disapprove of the methods used to rescue his son, Arthur and Charles refuse to allow Eagle Flies to hang. So they devise a plan to break into Fort Wallace and free the impetuous prince. After Eagle Flies is freed, we get another glimpse at his stubbornness, as he mocks his father's pacifism, even though violence and retaliation are what landed him in his cell. Come on. Your father sent us. My father. He told you to come and kill guards? No, he didn't say that. He... Of course not. You okay? Sure. Enjoy being tortured. Clears the mind. If you say so. Uh, whoa, whoa. Uh, I'm fine, I'm fine. Even after his failed attempts at fighting the army, Eagle Fly still wants to fight and stand against his oppressors for his people. While this is a noble effort, it is a vain one as well. Pride in the inability to see what Rainsfall calls the brave path will be Eagle Fly's undoing. After this breakout, a newspaper can be bought reading as follows. Murderous Indian breaks free. Fort Wallace a bloodbath. Vicious attack at night. Colonel promises justice. In an act that further proves their treachery and villainy, restless and disrupted forces amongst the Indian population have once again attacked American forces. This time in an effort to free one of their own. A murderer known as Eagle Flies was broken out of an army barracks at Fort Wallace, where he was set to stand trial for a series of murders of army personnel. In a daring attack in the middle of the night, members of his disruptive tribe attacked soldiers, brutally killing them and fleeing with their comrade. Eagle Flies is the son of Rain's Fall, a chief of the disruptive tribe that makes up most of the population at the Wapiti Indian Reservation. The tribe has become unmanageable and more obstinate at every punishment handed down and treaty broken. 
Colonel Favors, who supervises Fort Wallace, has vowed swift and unrelenting measures to control the Indian problem in the region. As the article states, war has come to the Wapiti, and this all comes to a climax in the mission, My Last Boy. Sir Vanderlyn, Mr. Morgan, Charles, they try to kill my people for oil, for oil. Today we ride once more. Ride with me, ride with us. Ride with us against the factory. I love your courage, son. It is a thing of great beauty. Stop! Everyone, stop! My son, my last son, don't. When I was your age, I fought. I saw death. I have killed. The men I knew were slain. My firstborn, your brother, had his head smashed by a drunken soldier. My wife had her throat slit. I made peace. I knew not to trust, yet I had no choice. Maybe you were right. Maybe the slow death is worse than the fast one. Maybe none of these men are good. Maybe a world in which they came to us is a world that we cannot endure. But endure we must. Father, you are tired. Do not die for pride, my son. We have suffered too much in this trick. The earth, the water, they have no pride. They endure, and we must endure. My only boy, my precious boy, do not mistake my strength for weakness. As your chief, I implore you. Your words mean nothing to me, father. Don't. Ride with me, now! Stop. Please, stop. Please, Mr. Morgan, have to help me after we spoke. This is just a trap. My son, my people will all die. You help this fellow, Arthur? Please. What of it? What else you been doing behind Dutch's back? What? The wars are over. We have lost. These young men will be annihilated. Please. I'll see what I can do. Charles? Who else will come with me? Oh, I'll ride, Arthur. Who knows what other secrets I'll learn about. Who else? I will. And me. Me too. Oh, and me. I guess. The war party is set to attack the Cornwall Kerosene and Tar Factory, and when asked why Eagle Flies would attack the oil fields, Dutch enlightens the group that it was his idea. Why the hell would they attack the oil fields? What do you mean? It's perfect. This was your idea? Partly. The army, the government, the industrialists, they've taken everything from these people. Wouldn't you want to fight back? You've handed them a death sentence. From here, the gang splits up, with Dutch helping to clear off the army, while Arthur, with the help of Charles and Sadie, and a few other Wapiti, seeks Eagle Fly. Let's ride! Arthur saves Eagle Flies and eventually the group is able to meet back up with Dutch. And it is here Dutch reveals just what his reasoning was for using the Wapiti. You know why I wanted them to attack this place? I have no idea. <laughs> Javier, you get them and you go. Until I find all my men. I'm not leaving. As you wish. Rest of you, get out of here. I'm staying with you. We're getting our ticket out of here. Come on, son. What are we looking for? Money, you fool. The money. There's state bonds here. Lots of them. I thought you were paying attention. Old Cornwall had a deal with the state. He was being paid to develop the region against the federal government's wishes as they didn't want problems with the Indians. Anyway, so... Dutch is able to find the state bonds, and as Arthur and Dutch are starting to make their escape, Colonel Favors arrives. But as Arthur goes to follow Dutch out, he gets hit by steam from a bust pipe, and Dutch leaves Arthur to die. He got one! A white one! 
Eagle flies is mortally wounded, and Arthur returns the prince back to his father who weeps. My friend, I'm sorry about this, about all of this. You have nothing to be sorry for. You know, Dutch, Duchess, I guess my thinking is he used you. He wasn't trying to help anyone but himself and his own crazy principles. We're grown men. Nobody made us do anything. Maybe I'm talking for my people as much as for yours. We saw he turned crazy and we couldn't believe it and we followed him anyway. They should never have gone this far. You seen the situation on the reservation? Better to die fighting than sick and weak. Maybe, but you, your people deserve better. Your friend here, my friend, he's a brave man. Phyllis, always has been. This won't be in vain. We will try to round up more men from the north, wherever we can. Many are ready to fight. No, this is over for all of us. Bring him to me. My son. What are they gonna do now? They must move. And fast. I'll stay and help them. I'll stay too. No, my friend. You have others who need you. Good people. I'm sorry, but we, we must pack and move. This is not the end of the story, however, as when coming back to play as John in 1907, we can find updates to some of these story threads. A derelict oil jack can be found on the reservation, and an article can be bought reading, Pump jack sits silent. No oil found at Wapiti. Investors allege fraud. The oil reserves discovered on the land near the Wapiti Indian Reservation in 1899 have turned up dry, and all drilling operations have ceased and packed up. There were high hopes for the location following a detailed exploration by the Leland Oil Development Company on behalf of Cornwall Kerosene and Tar, and a number of petroleum outfits had sought to develop it into a well-paying field. Workers flocked to the area in anticipation of jobs that would pay as much as 22 cents an hour. Companies sank well after well, coming up empty with only a minuscule amount of oil being found. Not enough to keep operations running. The tribe at the reservation went on the run after a series of attacks on the army. 
culminating in a bloody battle at the Cornwall Kerosene and Tar Factory around the time news of the oil discovery became known. Many members of the tribe were gunned down in Wyoming, but a few are believed to have escaped into Canada. It is unknown what will happen to the Indian reservation land moving forward as there are no Indians in the area to relocate there currently. This depressing article tells us a lot. For one, the tales of oil under the reservation were just those, tall tales with no truth to them. The Wapiti were forced to move for no reason. In fact, the footage that you've been seeing in the background is what's left of the reservation, with overgrown buildings and trash scattered about with one lonely derelict pump jack. We also learned of the fate of the tribe. The Wapiti were on the run and the tribe was separated, with some going to Canada and others going to Wyoming. There are some survivors of the tribe though. In fact, we can have a conversation with a surviving member of the Wapiti even in 1907 if we travel to Annisburg and visit the train station. Excuse me. Hello? Didn't I meet you a long time ago? I don't know. Was uh, Arthur? Arthur Morgan? Oh, yes. My name is Rangeful. And I'm Jim Milton. John Marston. Oh. Is Arthur... Uh, he passed away. A long time ago. Oh, I'm sorry. He saved my life. He gave his. That doesn't surprise me one bit. <laughs> and you? I know you had tough times. Ah, uh, well... My people aren't really a tribe. We're just a bunch of families, I suppose. But we're in Canada now. It's, uh... What are you doing here? I... I don't really know. My son, I suppose. Oh, he fell. I, I know. I'm sorry. I've got a son. I'm very sorry. Oh, it was a long time ago now. Well, it's good to see you, Mr. Marston. <laughs> and you? Uh, As we can see at the end of this narrative, there are no winners. Eagle Flies lost his life trying to fight for his people, and died in the process while saving Arthur. Leviticus Cornwall died at the hands of Dutch Vanderland, and Colonel Favors died during the battle at the kerosene and tar factory. Rain's fall will never be the same without a son, and his people lost their land and identity, as the Wapiti were reduced to a few families and can hardly be called a tribe. The oil that was supposed to make men rich under the land of the reservation was negligible, making all this conflict and loss for nothing. But this is par for the course of a Red Dead narrative. Dutch would go on and use native people for his own gain later in the story, chronologically speaking. But this video is long enough and our native narrative deep dive is done. I thank you so much for clicking on this video and hanging out with me and talking Red Dead lore on top of all of that. I hope that you enjoyed and please like, share, subscribe if you did enjoy, and I will see you in the next one. Peace!